Hi everyone, welcome to YouTube channel of Catalyst Center of Excellence. My name is Rupen Singh. Today I'm here with a very important concept of different types of traffic transfer efficiencies. As you know, for any ecosystem, the ultimate source of energy is sunlight. And then the sunlight is fixed by the photosynthetic activity of green plants. And the fixed energy is then passed on to other trophic levels. During this transfer of energy, there is loss of energy, as we all are aware what we call Linsman's law or 10% of law, that only 10% of the energy is passed from one trophic level to the next trophic level. But during passes from one trophic level to the next trophic level, energy has to pass through different trophic compartments. As I said, like if we talk about herbivores, any herbivore does not eat whole of the plant. It consumes a bit of it. Then whatever it has eaten is not all assimilated. And if whatever it has assimilated, all is not utilized by its growth and production. So the efficiency of transfer of energy during these various steps is of utmost importance. Probably that is the reason why a four marks question was asked in last CS and examination on this concept. It's a very important concept of ecological energetics, which talks about the energy dynamics. You see, this is one four marks question, which was asked in morning session. So today we'll try to solve this question. But before solving this question, let me explain you the concept regarding this question, okay? The knowledge required to solve this question is given in this book, which is the Fundamental of Licenses, Volume 1, which is published by the Catalyst publication. Whatever knowledge I'm using to explain this concept is given in this book. Moreover, as you know, Catalyst publication publishes various books of uh, life sciences, like there are two theory books, Volume 1 and Volume 2, along with one MCQ book. Many of you were uh, asking about when the new edition of MCQ will be available. So let me tell you, this 13th edition is already available in market. You can buy it from Amazon and Flipkart. And this latest edition contains questions of last examination, which was held, in, held on 17th of February. So you'll get those questions also in this book. So if you wish to buy any of these books, they're available on Amazon on Flipkart. So let us first start with the concept, how energy is passed on through passed on through various trophic compartments. If I take example of green plants and herbivores, okay? So suppose the energy available at the green plant level, we designate it as Pn minus one, okay? That is the energy available at the, which is energy fixed by the green plant through photosynthetic activity. Now, if we talk about a herbivore, and this particular box depicts herbivore compartment. So this herbivore will feed on this green plant, and during feeding, it is not going to eat whole plant. And it will eat leaves, some tender stem portion, but rest of the portion, which contributes a lot, lot to the structural portion, which will not be eaten. So that becomes part of the decomposer system, the part, portion which is not consumed, okay? That becomes part of the decomposer system. Whatever has been ingested by the herbivore, not all will be assimilated because if we talk about these herbivores, they are feeding on green plants and green, uh, these plants contains many of the material like cellulose, lignin, which is not digested by these herbivores. So obviously, it will be excreted through fecal loss. So whatever it has invested, I said uh, much of it will be removed in the form of fecal loss and the remaining will be assimilated, which we call in, the, in this case as AN. The energy which has been assimilated is not totally utilized, not wholly utilized by the, uh, this herbivore for its own growth, because for its survival, it carries out various day-to-day -day activity, and for performing those activities, it has to spend energy. It carries out the process of respiration. So a portion of this AN is lost as what we call RN, that is respiratory heat lot for carrying out all kinds of activities. The remaining portion, is what we call becomes the PN, which actually contributes to the growth of that herbivore. Okay, so what portion of PN minus one will become PN will depend upon three kinds of transfer efficiencies. That what portion of PN minus one becomes IN. We call in ecology it as consumption efficiency or exploitation efficiency. Okay, then what part of ingested material will become AN, okay? This is what we call assimilation efficiency, 
okay? And whatever has been assimilated, what portion of it will become PN? As I said, a little bit of it is lost as RN. So not all of AN becomes PN. So what proportion of AN becomes PN is what we call production efficiency. Okay? So these three transfer efficiencies are very important, which actually decide what proportion of PN minus one will become PN. Okay? Now, if we uh, try to understand each of them one by one, like first I start with consumption efficiency. So as I said, what proportion of PN minus one becomes IN is what we call consumption efficiency. So this becomes the formula. And the consumption efficiency will depend upon what the herbivore, where the herbivore is feeding on. Okay, if it is in feeding on herb forest, you, you see forests are made up of basically trees and in the tree, the edible, the eatable portion are quite, you know, very, very, very few things are which can be consumed by the herbivores as compared to the grass or as compared to the planktonic community. And for this reason, consumption efficiency is very low in case of forest, about just 5%. It's still higher for grassland, about 25%, and it becomes about 50% for phytoplankton-dominated community. So consumption efficiency depends where the organism is feeding on. Then if we talk about assimilation efficiency, it will depend upon what the herbivore is feeding. As I said, they are relying on uh, these, uh, that kind of uh, green plants and all these things, which contains many of the things which are not easily digestible. Okay, so assimilation efficiency will depend upon what the organism is feeding on. So if I compare the uh, assimilation efficiency uh, amongst different uh, organisms, it is going to be less for herbivores because they're feeding on such kind of food material which is not easily digestible. But consumption efficiency tends to be higher for carnivores because they are feeding on other organisms which are made up of the things which can be easily digested. So you see, assimilation efficiency depends on what kind of food is being consumed. The third efficiency is what we call production efficiency, which again, the formula comes out to be production efficiency is equal to PN upon N. What proportion of assimilated energy becomes the production at the next trophic level, okay? So production efficiency will again varies from uh, the taxonomic group of organisms. And you can understand like uh, production efficiency will be higher for all these ectothermic or percolothermic organisms which are not consuming much of energy in maintaining their body temperature. But the value of production efficiency tends to be lower for all these warm-blooded animals, endothermic organisms, which utilize a proportion of energy for maintaining body temperature, okay? So these three transfer efficiencies are very important for us. There is one more concept. Uh, this is one table which is given in this book, which is very important for you where you can see, like, if you see the production efficiency of endotherms, the values are quite low as compared to the ectotherms. They're having quite high values of production efficiency for the obvious reason that uh, these endotherms are utilizing a proportion of energy for maintaining their body temperature, okay? Then what we call trophic transfer efficiency, we can calculate it with the formula Pn upon Pn minus one. And you can use this formula to calculate the value of trophic transfer efficiency. And this is what we call 10% law, which I initially said like only 10% of the energy is passed from one trophic level to the next trophic level. Now, let us try to solve that question, which was asked in CSNF last examination. It's a very good question. As I said, I have already explained all the knowledge required to solve this question. So let us try to solve this question. What is given in this question was read it out. The diagram below depicts energy flow with a single trophic level where one amount ingested, I stands for amount ingested, Na amount not assimilated, R respiration, Pn is biomass production at trophic level, okay? Now, which one of the following options represents correct value for Pn, Na, R and I in kilocalorie respectively? What is given to you? If Pn minus one is 1000 kilocalorie, and then, then they've given you value of I n upon Pn minus one, which is about 20%, a upon I, 35%, and Pn upon A, which is 20%, okay? So like, let me write what is given in the question. Pn minus one is 1,000 kilocalorie, okay? Then they have given you value of In upon Pn minus one. And you know, In upon Pn minus one is consumption efficiency. So they have given you the value of consumption, consumption efficiency, which is 20%. So let me write it here. Consumption efficiency is 20%, okay? 
Then they have given you value of A upon I, which is 35%. So you know, this is what we call assimilation efficiency and its value is 35%. Okay. And then, then they have given you value of PN upon A, which you know is what, is, is what we call production efficiency and the value of production efficiency is 20%. Okay. This is what is given in the question. Okay. Now based on it, let's try to solve this question. Suppose like they have given you value of Pn minus 1 and consumption efficiency is 20%. So 20% of Pn minus 1 becomes the ingestion uh, proportion, becomes the I. Okay. So the formula of consumption efficiency was I upon Pn minus 1 into 100. Okay. The value of consumption efficiency is 20%. 20% is equal to you have to calculate I, Pn minus 1 is 1000 into 100, okay? So 1000 into 20 upon 100 is what? That is 200 kilocalorie, okay? So this becomes the amount ingested, energy available at ingestion, for ingestion, okay? This comes, comes out to be 200 kilocalorie, okay? I hope you get you're getting how I'm solving this thing. Now we'll calculate uh, the value of A. Okay, you have been given assimilation efficiency. Now you have the value of uh, this injection, I. Okay, so as the formula of assimilation efficiency was A upon I into 100. Okay, and you have the value of I that is 200 kilocalorie. Assimilation efficiency is 35%. 35 is equal to A upon the value of I is 200 into 100. So the value of A comes out to be 35 into 200 upon 100. Okay, comes out to be 70. So now you know the value of A is 70 kilocalorie. Okay, now we'll calculate the value of Pn. Okay, Pn, what was the formula of Pn? Pn was? Uh, the uh, production efficiency, we are talking about production efficiency. So production efficiency was Pn upon An, okay? And you know the value of A is 70 kilocalorie and you have been given the value of production efficiency to be 20%. So let me put the value, 20 is equal to, we have to calculate the value of Pn. We are given the value of An which is 70 into 100, okay? So Pn comes out to be 70 into 20 upon 100, okay? So just it comes out to be 14 kilocalorie. Okay. So we have calculated the value of PN, AN, IN. Okay, we know quite a few things. Now look at the question what they are asking. So they wanted to know value of PN, which you have already calculated. You wanted to know NA. Now you see 200 kilocalorie energy was available at I. Okay, out of which 70 kilocalorie kilo calorie becomes part of A. Rest of it is not assimilated. So if you deduct the value of 70 from 200, you'll get the value of Na. What proportion has not been assimilated? Because out of 200 kilocalorie, only 70 has been assimilated. So what has not been assimilated? 200 minus 70 comes out to be 130. Okay, this is what has not been assimilated. Then out of 70 calorie, of which is assimilated, only 14 becomes the production uh, production. So rest of it is lost as respiratory heat. So you can calculate the value of R, R by deducting 14 from 70. Okay, so if you deduct 70, uh, 14 from 70, it comes out to be 56. So you get the value of R also. Now look at the options, like they've asked you PN, so PN we have already calculated to be 14. Na, which is 130, R, which is 56, and I, which is 200. Okay, so look at which option. Okay, PN, no, this cannot be. Yes, this is the option. Okay, so this is your correct option. It was such a simple question. Actually, I elaborated quite of a, you know, I, 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 for, I did every kind of calculations. That is why, otherwise, solving this question won't need more than one minute. It's a very simple question. Okay, so you need to understand the concept 
for solving such questions. And let me tell you, reading thousand book, pages book is of no consequence if you're not getting the concept. The books of Catalyst publication has been designed in such a way that you have been given all these precise concepts in a very, very simple way. Okay, so if you want to learn more about these things, you can buy these books, which are easily available. You can buy any of these books, volume one, volume two, as well as this MCQ book. Let me tell you one more thing, like uh, understanding these concepts by watching YouTube videos is very easy. But randomly, you will get one, two, three concepts by searching for such videos. We keep on publishing some um, very important, very quality videos with some very important concept. But as you know, the CSNet examination is a very tough examination. It got a huge slavers and the, the, the knowledge required for clearing such examination requires a lot of hard work. You need to have command over many complex concepts. Catalyst publication, uh, Catalyst Center of Excellence also runs online classes. We are going to start new batches very soon if you wish to join these batches, because in these batches, we are providing online live classes. So whatever knowledge will be imparted in a live way, where you can have two-way interaction with the teacher to clear our, all our, your doubts. Like many of the institute which provide online classes by telecasting what they're teaching in the classroom class. We're not doing that. We're running dedicated online live classes, which are only for online students. You'll get these live classes, you'll get video recordings of those classes, we'll send you study material, uh, all these books of Catalyst publication through Courier. You'll get test series, that too, on NTA-based uh, desktop platform, okay, which is extremely important for you. So if you wish to join these online batch, if you wish to join um, by any of these books, the links are given in the description. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. You wish to watch more such video, you wish to uh, learn more about such concepts, Write back to me in the comment section. I'll come out with more videos on that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching this video. Do share it with your friends and do subscribe our channel. Thank you.